Hey guys, welcome back to Ebbs and Flows, where we talk about the highs and lows on and off the field. We've crossed codes today. I've uh, got a couple boys up and coming. Really excited to talk to these boys. <laughs> Belly, Mikey Mark, thanks for jumping on. Thanks very much, brother. Thanks for having us. Bro, I don't want to do your last name any disservice, so can you teach me how to pronounce it? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Noangenitwase. The no. Q's pronounced as a G. Yeah, Noangenitwase. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, don't okay. be confident with it. That's bro, cool. I, I was practicing it, but I just didn't want to do to be any like disrespect no, there. So, bro, thanks for jumping on. All right, boys, obviously I'm a Kiwi. Um, <laughs> Jake, a bit of a win on the, on the weekend. Talk about the Blizzard Cup from, you guys were up in the first 40, mm. playing very well. Do you want to talk about that game? Yeah, yeah. yeah mate, uh, it was, yeah, it was a hard one. Um, no, nah, look, I feel like the first 40 minutes was so much fun, eh? Like, that's probably the most fun I've had playing a footy game in a, in a long time just because you know like if you you're winning as a team it's unreal yeah, mm. it's a great fun and obviously it's against the all blacks in dunedin <laughs> mate all they do down in dunedin is play footy like it's all rugby so it's like the atmosphere is unreal and um the crowd was gone and that first 40 minutes and coming off half time like mate it was like so much we confidence like, yeah, yeah like we had so much going for us and we're yeah, they just chase us down, eh? Yeah. yeah. Um, what's it sort of like getting into those sort of experiences? Like, you see, you guys have grown up and I've seen what year you guys were born. I'm old enough to remember when the Wallabies were the best side. So f over the course of your whole life, you've just seen the All Blacks, I want to say this respectfully, smacking the boys. <laughs> um, what's it like to be out there and seeing the haka, seeing the anthem, being, in, being at the G, all that sort of stuff? What's that like, bro? Yeah, well, um, like, mate, like, just seeing the haka, like, you know, to think that we're the ones standing there now watching it's pretty pretty special um also you know the big crowds you know the way they you know they get around this game you know but that's how special it is uh you know it's pretty pretty crazy um and then you know versing the all blacks you know in the, in the period they have been at the moment where they've been so dominant um i guess the game the game that just happened you, sh you can see why they're so special you know to be able to come back from where they had been uh, you know it was shit for us but um, it shows you, you know, how, how good they are and, you know, we've got to, I guess, step it up if we want to take them on at the World Cup. Yeah. Um, what was the guy when you guys come into the international game, especially the All Blacks, what was the one guy that you looked across from the opposition and go, fuck, that's him? Did you have one of those moments? Bro, Artie, bro. Artie, bro. You oh, Artie? To, yeah. My Artie. Bro. My Artie. Bro. Yeah, you're Artie. <laughs> you're Artie. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, my first test when I was like real young i was like wow this bloke is a beast like even like on the weekend my first carry carried to arty <laughs> picked me up and walked me backwards <laughs> five meters bro i'm 130 kilos so yeah. he just picked me up and walked me back so it was like yeah, yeah nah someone like arty who's just you know he's just one of those blokes he's like similar to our hoops like our michael hooper like he just is always there doesn't go away fittest bloke on the field most aggressive and he's a leader. He's ruthless. So it's um. He's not. He's not that um big too. Like I, like when I watch him play, and the first time I met him in person, I was expecting this like really big. And I look at you boys. You boys are massive, <laughs> but like the way he sort of plays the game, he plays well above his weight, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, I will say the same thing. Already been like, mate. The way he's been going over the past few years. Um, obviously, like we've we've versed him sometimes in club, but I guess when you put on the you know the the jersey, it's he changes and. He, the try saving tackle he did you know that's we could have i reckon we could have won if we got that but, yeah you know, things he, you know he does where you don't see as much um goes to show how special he is and yeah it's pretty crazy to think yeah well, you know we're going up against him like that so yeah what about in the back line you sort of look across obviously um we're pretty stacked in our in our backs and bro you to be fair give you boys both your flowers been holding it down individually um been playing very well um who are you looking across at, at that side is it like a will jordan is it like caleb clark or I'd probably say like Bowden, either Bowden. Oh, he's yeah. a freaky. Mate, like I grew up watching him as well, and and Richie. Mate, like any of those two, when they, you know, when they're on the field, they just the way they do things. It's like you know, it's just it's special to like watch. Obviously, it's like reversing them, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to go up against mm. them. Um, oh, sorry, here you go. Different, yeah, just different sort of power. Those blokes, eh? Like yeah. our backs are powerful as, and like. It's hard like when <laughs> you like play as a forward and like you play like say in league, you play in the middle and you're mostly running and tackling forwards. Yeah. Like in union with all like the kick chases and the counter attack mm. and that sort of things, like you always find yourself tackling those <laughs> blokes. But yeah. like you got Caleb Clark running back, he's bigger than most forwards. Like mm. 
So you don't want to get bumped well. by you don't want to get bumped by <laughs> back. So, but far, no, yeah. do you see that part of the game when Will cranked Samu? Wow. <laughs> Ended up on the ground the poor dude. Yeah. Eh? Shout out Samu, my yep. boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I had Quaid in here uh, sort of yesterday talking about you boys and had great raps on you. Told me that you're very bad at playing cards. So I, was, I was like, bro, what's bad? <laughs> like he goes, bro, he's a shit as card player. You reckon you got some stories oh, about punishments? Give bro, some stories on those. Man, I've had. Cause I was I was the youngest in the squad for a long time. I had this little like toy. His name's Wally. Like, he's a little kangaroo, and you have to carry him around everywhere, bro. Lunch, team dinners, you know, training, and like for me, like Lungy's got it this year, and no one has touched him. That's why I'm so. <laughs> because like all, my, the three years I had a boat, I had to look. I had to strap him to myself. Like I ended up just strapping him to myself because, like, I was paying fines. I was, you know, I had to. I'll give you a good one. Like we had our, our forwards coach, Dan McKellar, who's like a notoriously pretty hard bloke, like um, very like um, like Aussie. I'd say he's just Aussie. Like he's just all about, you know, getting in the rough and tumble, that sort of thing. And I had to go into a like a team like selection and team training as he put it up on the board and had to say I had two choices. I had to go into the skill session and drop every single ball I caught. Oh. So I had to, every ball that came and, my way, I had to no one else and make knew. a mistake and no one else knew. And afterwards they would tell them or I had to in the team meeting say, like speak up and be like, nah, this is, you know, this is- Go against bull. it. Some, some of the fines that like some, some <laughs> yeah. boys come up with. Man, I was like- <laughs> Those are worse, you're hey, you'd oh, rather yeah. pay money. So yeah. I'm like talking to this guy that like, he's my forwards coach and like got a lot of respect for him. And he's like cranky, like he gets angry quick. Mm. And I've got to say to him, nah, this is, you know, this is bullshit. Nah, we're not doing this, bro. We've done too much contact this week. I'm not doing it like, and properly. And if I don't do it, then I got to do another thing. So I had to do it proper. So like there's so many things, bro. Like I had to go swimming in New Zealand when it was like minus three. Yeah. So much stuff, bro. Um, have you ever played the game when no one's allowed to talk to the head coach? Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, next time you go out for dinner, play that game with Eddie Jones, that'll be a bit of a giggle. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no I wouldn't one. play it. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way I'd play Yeah, that. it's pretty funny because they try and talk to you and all that sort of stuff happens. Yeah. Uh, just to swing it back to rugby, that game against RG, obviously – one of the great tries yeah, and i sure. thought you guys were home what was that experience like obviously growing out around those areas yeah. um we were wearing the aussie jumper I thought you sealed it bro yeah. what was that like man yeah look it was um man i had i had a lot of fun obviously obviously we didn't we didn't get the, the result we on but man like all the family in the crowd some of my mates in the crowd um you know it's pretty special and then yeah like you said like that last moment where i, I thought i you know i thought I, we had it after that um and I still remember running and just looking at my family and friends and just thinking, shit, like, oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> no, you're sweet. Sweet what um, you want, bro. Just thinking, like, like this is this is happening. It's mm. yeah, pretty special. Um, you know, there's one of the, those moments I, like, you know, always remember. Yeah. Was it, when you're running, was it going quick or was it going slow? Could you, like, really absorb it? Or were you just like, fuck, just get me there? No, I just, just <laughs> get me there. But you should see when I got there and I was, like, just blowing. Um, you know, it, was, it happened so quickly. But, mm. um. But yeah, I just felt like I was on a treadmill for a second. Um, <laughs> you didn't look like you're on a treadmill, right? You're flying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so obviously, you guys got World Cup preparations coming up now. Give us a sort of behind the scenes of what's happening. And I'll ask about Eddie Jones a little bit later, but just from a training perspective, uh, coming off a pretty rough campaign, um, going into a pretty nice pool over in World Cup. What's the confidence like and how's the training been? Yeah. Oh well, I I just say um, yeah. Obviously, we've like you said we have a bit of a rough patch, um, but I guess that's the way you look at it. You know, I'm pretty confident um, with what we've done so far. Um, where we've, we went from the first game, you know, just playing our first 20 minutes good, and then kind of dying off, and then you know we thought we played uh, most of the game last week pretty good. Mm. Um, so we're kind of building. We've only been together for a short time, so I guess now for us, you know. Not much time left leading to the World Cup. It would just be about, um, I guess, just building those connections a bit more and, um, you know, keep doing what we've been doing because it, it's working and um, just staying confident with that because, you know, we've, we've got the team to, to be able to do uh, a, a lot of things. And yeah, I think sure. one of those things is winning the World Cup. So, um, yeah, just have a crack. Yeah. What about you, bro? Yeah, 100%. No, I agree with Marky. Like, Cohesion's a massive thing in our sport, I think. Like, if you look at the All Blacks, for example, they're a team that have been so dominant over the last decade. And the, if you look at their spine, not much changes, like maybe one or two swap out, but they sort of get picked up in that and, and get brought along in that leadership journey. Mm. Like, and I feel as though we've had like a spine and a lot of older players that are 
the vast experience that have like sort of been that rock for us and now for like guys like me and Marky who are obviously the younger guys it's sort of allowed us to uh, develop and um and, and as a team it's been like a massive thing like we've you know obviously we started terribly against you know our first game against South Africa which we weren't happy with as a whole and then you slowly Bro, built on everything I, I know you boys are big but they're they're big big aren't they it's crazy started, yeah. like man when, when you like i went that was my first time going over there and like you obviously you hear about seeing how big like obviously seeing how big the players are but you just go over there and everyone's just like i don't know what they're feeding them over there but. <laughs> Bro, next level yeah. like there's some of their boys man like six foot nine and way bigger than you like, oh, and can move like, yeah that's the crazy part about yeah. it you're um, not spotting them up behind them more they can nah, follow you exactly <laughs> right yeah. like it's yeah it's next level like i don't know what they feed them over there yeah all right, the yeah. the, co <laughs> uh, the coach Eddie Jones. Uh, I think he's great for rugby. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm a leaguey. He brings a lot of attention to you guys, and I don't know if it's always good or <laughs> bad attention. But behind the cameras, behind the press conference, behind his podcasts, what's he like to deal with on a day to day basis? I think he's really like he's for me. That sort of head coach is something that I probably need. Um, he's someone that like. It's a like, tough love. It's like, you know, he pushes you to be your best and he comes from like the position of, you know, you don't want to look back in five years' time. Something he said to me that I can share is like, he, I don't want to look back in five years' time and, you know, I could have been this player and I could have had this effect on mm. like rugby in Australia, but then you don't and you don't want to have regrets. And that's something that he harps on is that, you know, he's just going to keep us accountable and obviously training, like the, the amount of training we're doing and how hard we're working is crazy, but it's it's to break those bad behaviors and, and and get better as a team and then and then it'll slowly like peter off but we're in a moment like you know in a phase now where it's a lot of just storm everything is crazy but it's we're getting better dramatically and that's what we need to do to get to the where we need to get to the world cup what about you bro yeah i'd say yeah very similar um probably sum it up like he he's a, he's very good at challenging everyone and like that's from staff to players um and um you know as much as we work hard he um he's very good at motivating us to, to do it like he's mm -hmm. you know as much as like there's some negative stuff there there's always a, a lot of positive reinforcement as well which is good yeah um and that 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 actually i guess for me personally like he gives a lot of confidence in, in me to go out there and and you know do what i can um for the team um and i guess that's what he's trying to build um with everyone just having the confidence in what we're doing but um but making sure we're challenging ourselves to get better mm. while we're doing it as well um so yeah, no, he's been really good. Um, obviously, we heard, you know, back in the days you'd hear stuff about him, but yeah, he's 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 good to be around. He's actually quite a laugh as well. Like, just oh, the, is he? Yeah, man, some of the, like just like just that dinners, like team dinner, or even the meetings. Like he he'll be roasting boys, like in a good way, not in a bad way. Oh, but okay. like um, he keeps yeah he keeps a smile on all the boys' faces, which is good. Um, the banter's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Like, has he got it like oh, that? Does he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's real good. <laughs> banter's next level. It's hilarious. We've got this bloke in our team, Blake Shop. He's like, uh, he's built like a fridge man. Like his um, bro is this his brother? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, he's built like a fridge man. Like he's a prop. He's the same position as me. Unreal bloke. He's he's like he calls him brick shit house and he calls it <laughs> he calls him that in the media and everything and he's just like every morning he's like hey you going shit house like, like just like man the banter is hilarious and yeah. he just like has nicknames for everyone i was half body for ages because yeah. i got small legs <laughs> and are you all torso are you? yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah bro, that's like me one stomach bro <laughs> one nickname was sausage dog back in footy so <laughs> all long torso <laughs> um yeah so we'll touch on world cup pretty soon but i want to talk about like like i said earlier to you boys i remember the wallabies like we're the team in early 2000s you guys got probably the most important part of rugby or aiu over the next four years you got world cup this year obviously the british lions are coming down there hopefully boys smack them and the world cup comes comes here from i know your guys job is just to focus game by game and, and world cup and just do your best but do you ever look outside the game in terms of like media you see afl growing you see nrl growing and i come from new zealand where rugby's so big do you feel like you guys are getting lifted out a little bit uh yeah look um like like you said it's it's evident rugby isn't what it used to be um and and yeah it's sometimes it does get brought up like like for example eddie you know eddie has told us like we we have the opportunity you know to um to bring that i guess that uh, that passion 
and that drive for the game back that we haven't had in a while. So it's definitely it's definitely there. Um, I guess it's just yeah, it's just up to us to to be able to go out there and change it. I guess yeah. Yeah, like my, my thoughts around it are like if you're successful, you you the game grows. Like mm. obviously in New Zealand had so much success. That's your sport. It's your mm. nation's sport. It's something that's followed so closely. In Sydney, there's you know there's so many rivals, so many rival codes. Um, there's so many different sports now that are that, that are competing for that market, and you got to look at it that way because it's you know it's not in Sydney. There's like how many league clubs like eight, how eight many, yeah, ten? eight or ten yeah, or something league yeah. clubs. So it's like too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like so you, like we're competing with them, but it I think it just comes down to winning. Like if if we start winning, you know we we push this world cup to, to try and win it and then we get there and we win it and then we come home for a home line series and a world <laughs> cup you'd be surprised man be like that weird. line series like um it's a different world o- yeah. over in europe like mm, rugby is, rugby, rugby is everything in europe like it's a different world bro yeah. like you go over there for a spring tour and the crowds everyone knows like people like in japan like they turn up with dolls like of you of plays, <laughs> yeah. like, do you want to go a long yeah, tour dolls, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well what's mine fat nah. but like he's yours like, got a six-pack right yeah, 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 exactly <laughs> but yeah like it's like overseas it's crazy bro and it's it's like it's bigger than anything like it goes like football and then rugby union and then like a league wasn't a real thing over there but nah. and, and like when the games are playing in those towns like you got cardiff uh, Murrayfield, like Scotland, all those places. Twickenham, Ireland, Twickenham the yeah. stadiums, Twickenham, bro, they're they're amazing. Stadium. It's always packed out. Starred where um, Marky where played, there, yeah, and and where we're going for the World Cup, bro. It's it's a different world, and that's something that like we'd love to bring back to yeah, Australia. Like that's mm. the thing. That's what you're talking about. Like mm. you know, at the moment we don't have that, but we, like yeah, we we do have the opportunity to to bring it. Yeah. So we do like you do think of it sometimes here and there. Um, um well, I was um at the G when you guys were playing and. I remember just sitting there looking around and 100% you'd never be able to fill a league international game. If you had mm. um, Australia versus New Zealand, we'd probably struggle to fill out like Bank West. Yeah. So if you look at international rugby in Australia, it's still very well supported. Mm. It's just the club game, like our club game in NRL and AFL is really big. Mm. AFL's, mm. AFL's there. Yeah, like I was at Collingwood the night before, oh, yeah. same crowd, bro. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. So their club football is really good, mm. NRL thing, but you guys internationally, it's fucking exciting, bro. Because yeah. yeah. you know what it is, bro. In NRL, like they'll have an international comp and maybe a couple guys from England will come or a couple of random dudes from like Lebanon. But it's basically just a, <laughs> <laughs> basically it's just an NRL just playing each other, but they play thing like when the Lions come down, like Farrell might be coming down. Yeah. There's guys that you've never seen play in person and you understand or yeah. intimate yeah. when you guys play yeah. France. Like yeah. I understand their history, so I want to go see those guys play live yeah. where we don't really have that in league. So yeah. I think it's going to be a prime time for you guys to come through. Yeah, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And like, if we get to be a part of it, it'd be unreal. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know about Marky, he's year to year basis, yeah. mate. So, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. so save the night, save the night. You're going to have no. to contact his manager to ask about that one. <laughs> oh. No, on. well, uh, that segues nicely. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you're sort of signing um, year by year contracts. i got a quote from you in here. In a perfect world, I like to stay in rugby, but there's always a but. There's obviously other things out there that might interest me. Quote from you. Mm-hmm. Soccer, bro. What does that mean? <laughs> well, the way Saudi Arabia is going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you play golf, bro? Or yeah. Try and, try and get on that little crew. Um, play ping pong, bro. Yeah, oh, that's just, I guess, um, you know, being lucky enough to play footy at the moment. And I guess, yeah, look, I'm, I'm signed for another year. I've still got another year here. But, you know, after those, um, you know, the next years after that, I guess they're open. Um, so, yeah, like like the quote says, I'm open to anything. Um, <laughs> but yeah, at the moment, just focusing on, on the next few steps. You might have a um, future in politics after that answer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to ask a question for you, Leek. It's obviously you got the build for it. Um, very evasive the way you play. Very active. <laughs> I watch you and Kurabi to get around. Hardly ever on your wing, taking carries all the time. <laughs> um, and that's like in rugby league big work ethic they carry 20 times are you sort of looking over the fence i don't want to put words in your mouth but is that sort of something that excites you yeah look it's i'm not i'll say it's there like it's uh definitely an option um like i've I've grown up playing playing league um so it's definitely something that's you know i I feel like i have a connection to Mm. um so that's why i guess in the sense that you know I'm, i'm open to to things that that may come or may not come who knows but um 
yeah, at the moment, obviously just playing my union. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You're good. Always playing now, mate. You won't be going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hundred new deals coming out soon. Come on, man. Um, another league question. Obviously, Swali coming over. So you sort of seen that the type of money he's getting, and obviously, hopefully, the rising tide raises all ships and all that sort of stuff. What's some couple of league guys from NRL that you'd love to put the gold jersey on with? Is there any guys that really stand out to you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> Cam Murray, hundred percent, would be one. Everyone, everyone says that. Is he was he that good? Was he? Bro, when I was at school, I was in year uh, year nine, and I was watching him play first, like fifteen, in our school system. And mate, he was the best player on the field by country miles every single time he took the field. And like, I'm not, I'm not and it, the position of inside center just like suits him so well. Like, he's not, he's not huge. He's very evasive, uh, unreal ball carrier. Like the courage, hundred out of a hundred. And he would just be, I reckon, the best inside center. Do you reckon? In the world. He, I know it's more of a luxury, but do you reckon it's nice to have a twelve that can kick? So I look at like Jordy Barrett. He hits him sweeter than most. Yeah. Um, will that will that weigh him down or no, just uh, boot well, it around well, him? Well, eh? plenty, but, but, there's, there's guys, yeah, there's guys who yeah. don't kick, uh, or yeah, who don't generally kick. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that would be that would stop him from um, stop him from I guess getting uh, being effective. Yeah, mm. but, yeah, being effective. Like you can do it. Like like I said, he can ball carry. He's, he's got some good hands, so you can, yeah, he'd be able to use that. I guess um, it just depends on how the team would w work around him. If that mm. makes sense as well. Like who who's around him and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. So. Tweed and Union, like there's a lot of dynamics, like jumping and lineouts, that sort of thing. So like, you know, a beast ball carrier who's a back rower could end up not getting picked because you know you need to pick a six or something that can jump in a line out because you don't have enough options. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. like it's a it's a weird thing. Like that's something we face this year. Like obviously with Big Willie Skelton, 150 kilos, it's gonna be hard to get in the air. So <laughs> you know you got like people like him, but then you got like you know people in the back row like Tom Hooper who can who can then take his line out load and then we can have him in the you know what I mean? Like it's a it's how a how big is he, bro? How big is Hooper? Tom Hooper because he just ran, ran over yeah, D-Mac pretty easy. Yeah, yeah he's, right, like, he's huge. He's, well, he's half body as well apparently. Yeah, <laughs> so half body he gets that as well. He gets that in the chat. No, nah, he's like he'd be six four, six yeah, five same, maybe. Yeah. A big build, big like big fella. Yeah. Um. Any other guys? Obviously, Cam Murray is like the obvious one. A lot of people say. Uh. Any? I'd go. I'd probably say. Um. I'd put Payne Hass in there for sure. Eight. Uh, yeah. Or yeah. Six. Eight. I'd probably put him six. Yeah. Like big boy, just carry and tackle. Use the ball, bro. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's like. Keep it simple for him. Mm. I think he'd do some damage. Obviously, he's look at him. He's obviously doing a lot of damage in, in the NRL. And mate, his engine. I've heard his engine's unreal. So yeah, he'd be uh, he'd be pretty good. Fuck, it's pretty exciting, eh? Um, I, I bro, honestly like um, because I'm a, I'm a rugby fan, and I hope a few of those boys come over and like give you guys um, like because I watch you play, bro. You're in New Kirribilli, you guys are so hard to tackle. And I watch the All Blacks, like their whole backline is like a little bit annoying to tackle. You know what I mean? It makes a difference, and mm -hmm. obviously you guys got to lay a platform for them to do that. But I hope it comes, man. It's gonna be an exciting time for rugby over the next couple of yeah. years. Mm -hmm. What was it like, um, Alatoa going down? Obviously Achilles in the scrum. Oh, bro. Does yeah. that does that does that shit sort of scar you? Uh, oh, you're right. It would scrum? scar like a player. Like scrums are just a weird thing, bro. Where like you've got like tons of weight going through your body. Like, and I, and I just say tons. Like, I think it's like two tons of something going through your back. Like, especially at the front. Oh, really? Is, so, it, is yeah. that the weight behind? Yeah, it? yeah. yeah. So like, it's you, you're transferring a lot of force through your body. So there's obviously always a lot of injuries in the front row, and there's so much weight and load, especially on a tight head on the right side of the scrum. Mm. Al's a beast. He'll he'll come back better than ever. But it's just unfortunate. Like he's he was our captain. He was our leader. He was probably one of our better players. And he's like tight head. We need some tight heads. Like he's he's world class. So it's, it's if you, if you I don't know the difference. I I know where they sort of stand. But what's the big difference between those two, tight head and loose head? Well, uh, I reckon loose head's like a lot easier. <laughs> and I'll say that that's because I, I play I, I play loose head. But like tight head, you have to be. Crazy strong, like you just have to be uh, very strong. Like I'm just in the scrum, mate. It's just yeah. in the scrum, like technically a lot. Is it like a different type of strength? Or? Yeah, yeah. Like you look at Taniela Tupo. He's yeah. 
he squats like 300 kilos and benches over 200 and he's 145 kilos and he's huge and he's so strong bro yeah but like i i could never replicate that on the right side of the scrum it's like left side's like you're you're against my head's on the outside i'm against one person oh it's nice out there yeah. Yeah. got a yeah, bit of room nice out there bro he's in the another mix. flanker yeah, he's, in the, he's in the mix bro he's but he's got two heads each side and he's pushing against like five other people so mm. he's like you gotta be proper strong um like it's, it's part of the game that like union guys and league guys always talk about like union guys look at league and go that scrum's a waste of time we us leagueies watch a union scrum it collapses three times we're like you guys are wasting time what's <laughs> it like being uh rolling into a scrum the first time because i hear, he'll hear phil coons talk about it like oh this is the part of the game that we love and sort of shit like that is it actually like that i don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel like he's throwing yeah. that off to nah, you yeah, bro. Yeah, um it's a love-hate relationship. It's good when it's going well, but it's like definitely a hard thing I've had to learn. Like you come up against blokes that are 30, 33 years of age and 145 kilos. Like my starting debut for Wallabies was against the Springboks and I went up against Franz Malherba, who's 145 kilo farmer from Bloemfontein. Got that country strength. Right. Eh? Yeah. And like <laughs> I got pumped. And like my first scrums in Super Rugby, Nella sent me off. Like I went off the field. Like I got carded for scrums, which is like unheard of. So like it took took me like a lot of lessons to learn actually how to scrum and how to do it, especially as a young bloke. But like it's, but I love hate. Like training scrums, no, not great. <laughs> like yeah. Training malls, not great. Yeah, like it's all in a grain of salt. But in a game, if your scrum's going well and you're dominating the other team, there's no better feeling. So it's, yeah, it's very, it's interesting. It's I was lovely. um I was talking to Quaid about it, and obviously he he made the like mistake when he was saying like if we he goes I made the mistake like I own that but like if we had all the boys on deck for the scrum it like doesn't sort of collapse and they don't get the penalty mm -hmm. and from someone who doesn't really understand the game as well as you guys I just didn't realize how important set pieces was yeah. until sort of Quaid yeah, yeah. sort of breaks get, it down yeah. for me bro mm. yeah well, um yeah you got blokes in, blokes in Europe who are like 140 kilos who can't do anything else around the field yeah but scrum but, but scrum so and they yeah. get paid like whatever Bro, like, it's like in france like you get paid near a million dollars to be just, just a scrum. scrum like that's yeah like your point on what you said there how important the set yeah. piece is like that's crazy and you know as, as unfortunate that that happened knock on and then there was a scrum we we can we still we can still win that if that makes sense yeah 100%. Like, still, like, and that's exactly what he was saying yeah bro, like yeah. we still have the capability to get the ball back um and that's yeah i guess that that gets into your point of you know how crucial the set piece is like like he was saying, there's some guys who literally just get paid just to scrum. Which is <laughs> like have a good little gig, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Bitcoin, bro. Like yeah. tight heads in Europe are the highest paid. Mm. Flat stick. You ask anyone. Who, who's the highest paid prop in, in the world? Nella. <laughs> <laughs> I get Nella scraps, man. No. Yeah. Um, no, nah, yeah. Like, no. I'd say Nella's one of the better, better tight heads in the world, scrummaging wise, when it's on his day. Mm. Um, but like those South African boys, they all play all over Europe. Mm. All the Argentinian boys, all over Europe. Yeah, in um, Europe, in Europe. So what we're getting at Europe, there's a lot of set piece. Like set yeah. piece is a big thing over there. Wet, um, like cold. Yeah. Like so, so like scrums. Drop. Yeah, lots of ball drop are going to lead to scrums and stuff like yeah. that. So, um, there's a lot of I guess big dogs that play over there. Yeah. Um, in the set piece kind of. Well, one thing I like about rugby is is like obviously different countries play different ways and you yeah. see English sides they're always keen to have a shot at goal and mm -hmm. I don't know if that comes off of like soccer history or because the weather's wet all the time like that's how they build the game or maybe it's because Wilkinson was so good yeah. um, but like I just feel like the way we play rugby down here and when it's flowing like you guys in that first half and it's just back and forth yeah. um, is, is there like a downside to playing that more of expansive style of football? Um, Depends if it's going well or not uh, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 100% <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd say it like it depends, um, or like it can depend on fitness sometimes, um, or even like the conditions. Like if it's you know wet and rainy and windy and stuff, and you're throwing the ball a bit too much, it's, sometimes it might not help you out. Yeah. So like, yeah, it differs. I'd say like you can play, we can play that expensive footy. Yeah, it does, um, yeah, it has a lot to do with our like, I reckon like the people we have in Australia, like obviously. We have a lot of, um, we're usually the most like fit, like endurance wise. Skill, um, we're pretty skillful. skillful um, like we have a like, big Polynesian contingency in our team, mm. like a lot of power runners, like a lot of people that are so powerful. That's crazy. Like, so it's like, 
you got to like weigh that up. Like obviously we want to go to set piece and slow the game down and stuff like that if if it's the right time. But mm. in saying that, like if we've got blokes like Mark on the wing, we need to give them the ball. We've got blokes like, you know, Rob Valentini in the pack or Taniella, we need to give them the ball because, you know, that's their thing. Like that's what they're good at. That's what they expose teams with. So it's like, yeah, we, we play that way because that's the Australian way and that's Australian rugby. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's something that we have to learn and and get used to is like if we go over to Europe and we go to France and it's a rainy day and they've got a big pack, you know, we're going to have to change our game to that slow well, scrums. Yeah. <laughs> French, yeah, French side's cool, eh? They've got a cool side, eh? Yeah. DuPont and all those boys. Pretty, yeah, man. But, pretty cool at the moment. Um, yeah. yeah Sorry, what were you going to say? No, no, I was just going to go on about the point like um, – as, yeah, and as much as we we want to play our own footy, like yeah, we're gonna to have to uh, adapt to certain situations, and mm. um, but at the same time, we've got to stay confident and play the way we do because it works. We know it works. That's why people have done it for years. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's all I was gonna say. Um, who do you see as the biggest threats for the World Cup? Threats. Plenty on the other side of the pool. Yeah. Oh, it's weird because it's the first time in a while that we've had like sort of a World Cup where there's um, a lot of the, I think they say the left side of the pool. The left side of the pool is like <coughs> sort of uh, really stacked. Like you've got Ireland, South Africa, New Zealand, France. England, France, all like sort of like have to play each other before they get to like the real top end. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, look, it's going to be, I don't like I think France are favourites. Yeah. Um, oh, like, yeah. Obviously there's, you know, France and Ireland been doing well. Mm. Um, but I think, like we shouldn't think of people as threats, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, okay, right. yeah. But like yeah. France and Ireland have been doing so well um, over the past few years. Um, New Zealand always come good, um, you know, at the World Cups or mm. the big stages. So um, I think we're lucky. We, like you said, we're got a good the, pool. Yeah, yeah, we're on the right side at the moment. So and I think um, you can like I like I know games are measured in wins and losses, but mm. like at a deeper level, when you actually play the game. I think from four games ago to where you are against the All Blacks down in Dunedin, a chance to win the game. The growth's been there yeah. and it'd be a good chance to roll in against like Georgia and build confidence again. Oh, you just need to go on a run, don't yeah, you? Yeah, no, that's, that's, the, yeah. Yeah, that's the goal. Um, yeah, like you said, yeah, just try and build and then hopefully, you know, go right through and try to yeah, take that cup. 100%. Uh, QC, my boy. Uh, Sid used to sort of follow him around that training when you were a little bit younger. Sort yeah. of pulled him up oh, when he was man. older. It's a funny still, story. Still now as well. Still, yeah. still, still hold his pocket, bro. Nah, um, <laughs> he was, um, yeah, because my old man actually coached the Reds. So like <clears throat> weird, like sort of like full circle sort of stuff. Like when Quaid was at the Reds, playing at the Reds, when the Reds were really successful. When the Reds were the yeah, Reds. Yeah, yeah. When the Reds were like, you got Will Genia, Quaid, all those sort of boys. Digby, yeah. Digby Higginbotham, all the That was stars. a time, mate. That that was was, and you were there as a kid. Yeah, my, my old man was the forwards coach. And so like Slips Now, um, Rob Simmons when he was in the Wallabies a couple of years ago when I was just starting and uh, and Quaid um, would see me running around as the ball boy. I was like <laughs> six, bro. Like, there's a photo actually of me and Simo, who's the Rob Simmons, who was in the um, in the Wallabies a couple of years ago, with his hand on my head, like just like resting <laughs> on my head with a, for a photo, and I had my Reds jersey on. So it's, go the Tars, but yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Loki uh, Reds guy. Yeah, yeah, I get that. But yeah, it was like yeah, it was pretty cool. Like, and they felt terrible as well because like obviously it's pretty funny. Like a kid used to pat on the head is like. Yeah, yeah, but he's now packing behind me in a scrum. It's like sort of really weird. Like that must be cool for you, bro. Oh, bro, it's like the coolest thing ever, bro. Like, yeah, it's well, it's words can't explain. Like, sort of you play with the people you watch, bro. Like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. I get to see Michael Hooper every day. I used to think like this, like he was like everything. It's yeah. crazy. Mm. Um, what about you? Obviously, sort of look after yourself a bit. Kind of look like Quaid with the, with the eyes and <laughs> shit like that. If the influencer, uh, not I want to say influencer, but the Instagram. But do you look at him for like motivation, not so much on oh, as well as on the field because he prepares mm. fucking better than most. And I've hung out for him and like we're in Japan, we'll fall asleep, he'll wake up and do his like fucking half an hour stretching routine. Yeah, is it cool? o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Like, is it cool to see that type of preparation through someone who like been in been back and stuff? Yeah, oh, I'd say um, I just go back to the, like it's cool because, you know, growing up watching, you know, Craig when he was, like obviously he's a superstar but you know back then and and still now um but yeah it's cool to see how he does things um and i guess yeah you, you take you take certain things out of you know how he um, prepares and you know how, how well organized he is like like after training like he has a set plan as to what he does and stuff like that um 
you know, it goes to show, you know, how why he does so well. It's because um, I guess he's just consistent with the, you know, the dedication that he, you know, he's been doing for the past however long and, and yeah. at least to now. So, um, yeah, no, it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I guess pretty cool to, you know, see how he does his things and. Um, it's just so detailed, yeah. eh? Like that's the thing. Like um, I was talking to him yesterday. I was like, oh, talk us through your kicking routine. He's like, oh, well, on Monday I do like shapes or he's just saying all this random shit bro yeah. he, was talking, he was talking about 15 minutes about a kicking routine i was just like oh yeah that's the crazy part like the detail of it like um but that 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 shows how smart he is as well like that's one thing i've taken out um i guess from the time that because this is my first time i guess being around and being a part of team when Quaid's there and um the cool thing is to see how you know how smart he is um you know just with footy and the things that, that he does um and i guess that comes from the detail like just the, the detail that he put puts into everything um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, that must be cool. Um, I talked to him a little bit about rugby and we sort of have these conversations about like players can't really be themselves and, and like, well, the same conversations I have with Artie where because the All Black system's been so strong for so long that that culture that they've developed is all about team and then it's, I wouldn't say it's not celebrated but it's hard to be an individual person out there. But one thing that Quaid always, he said this a couple times and I, I think Super Rugby is great because it's, um, had its time and obviously the South African teams have left do you think it would be better if the Australian teams pulled out of super rugby like you never played New Zealand but you all went into club rugby because I live out east like beasties I love the works <laughs> I live the manly for a bit like those games are, are massive mm. do you reckon it would be better to build the game through club level or do you miss out on the development of playing super rugby sorry long winded question but I hope you oh, yeah I reckon you need like you need some sort of representative footy between like the wallabies and club level um, obviously they, they did it a long time ago actually like early 2000s where like you would get picked out of your club team to play for wallabies so there are a few blokes that like playing first grade for sydney uni on a sunday and then the next week they're in wallabies camp playing against the all Blacks, <laughs> starting against the all Blacks. so it's like i think there needs to be that buffer obviously we, there was the nrc for a bit which was another step um, yeah we actually played that yeah. was when we came sort of through that was the last year of it so we played for country yeah from the country, country but yeah we played for um new south Wales country and yeah i just think like yeah the waratahs and, and the reds will always be there i just think like i i think that like so we, we need like a south africa we need like the argentinian team the japanese team i reckon it's yeah or like, or like even like the new zealand like you know we've had a, i guess a rough um few years with aussie teams and the new zealand teams but um i guess that 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 stuff that experience is actually help us mm. like it's as weird as it yeah because then when you go to play the all blacks it's not like oh i haven't seen this dude before like 100%. he was just wearing red and black before exactly. he was in a chief's uniform before yeah but now they're just all together in black yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's, yeah it's hard because you go like if you play the chiefs you got like that d mac and every all your prep that week is on him yeah you're like okay this bloke you dress up someone in a bib like on the other team who's yeah, not yeah. playing yeah, and yeah. you go he's d mac don't <laughs> let him go anywhere <laughs> like and then, like, they all come together for the All Blacks and every single player is, like, at that level. So, you mm. then, like, watch everyone. <laughs> yeah. You're sort of like, okay, everyone can do everything. So, it's like, there's no weakness. There's no chink. Like, there's nothing we can go after. It's just all, you know, we just got to all buy into the team plan and mm. hope that our team plan and we do it as hard as we can, can, you know, produce a result. Mm. So. But one of the theories you sort of brought up in club rugby was that, like, because you guys haven't won for so long, like it'd be nice to see. Like I remember when the Tars won, like maybe five, six years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. like how big that was. So the Australian public isn't used to an Australian team winning and then therefore they go follow that. And like you said, like you guys struggled in the bleed for the last 20 years and it hasn't been your guys' fault, but you still pack out the G. Yeah, It's fucking crazy, you mm. know what I mean? So I think that was all the point he was always getting across. Mm, yeah, 100%. Like rugby's always going to be big over here, I believe. Yeah. It's just got to get bigger. Mm. And, and through success, I think that brings it. So it's like, man, th there's so many Kiwi supporters over here. Right? <laughs> yeah. Even the GA, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> after the game, most of them were, were all black supporters. So it was like, we're getting some all black chants going for a bit. It's like, yeah. oh, oh right. like, <laughs> to, up to. Um, it's probably not your realm, but it's a realm that I'm actually interested in. But the media side around it, and I know um, it's a little bit traditional. Do you think, is there anything that you feel that it could improve on? Because I look at league, like we've got all these, I call them sub-medias. So like we were a part of that with YKTR Sports, Bloke in the Bar, you got Hollow Sports who just fucking talk tr like rubbish, but it's absolutely so funny. Do you reckon mm. there's definitely a space for that 
here in Australia, and I feel like it's really missing. I know there's Peak Athletic Club, and they sort of do their thing, yeah. but like that next evolution or that um, next sub media, I think that's where the growth really lies within the game. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, like, I think, like you said, it's very traditional. Like, there's not much going like going on, if that makes sense. And that's mm. why that's the difference I feel with, um, I guess, the, the NRL's media or the AFL's media compared to us is like there's so much going on, um, and yeah, there's definitely you know definitely a big space for I guess those other little sub medias, like you said, to to I guess get talking and. Um, get more i guess action on, on on unit and i guess that's that's part of how we can grow the game yeah um yeah it's definitely something that you see some like, talking shit eh? yeah, like, literally. <laughs> like, like, look at, like, yeah sometimes eddie you know he can throws out things but that gets people talking you know what i mean like mm. i guess that's um i guess that's what the game needs a bit just something something just to get the game yeah there are some and, yeah there are some interesting guys in union man like quite <laughs> exhibit a like he would be probably the most well-prepared person or athlete going around in team sports like mm. he's next level like always doing the same thing same routine you know prepares every day like it's it's his last like he he's so strict on his preparation so like someone like that obviously you would have had him on here and and, and he's you know number one probably for podcasting because of his stories and stuff but he's like he's exhibit a of like someone that's so interesting that people would want to hear about it and that's something that like i feel like we miss in union yeah 100 yeah. percent. do you know what i think really misses in union and like i've grown up watching it a lot of it but like i still don't understand the nitty-gritty of it and like mm. the, the scrum chat we just had before like i find that stuff really interesting yeah. and then you see a lot of australian people or new zealand we watch american sports and nfl is amazing because just how technical mm. that sport is and league is to me checkers it's fast it's fun like it transfers well to social media because there's impact and we're 10 meters apart but unions like chess yeah. and you can play union in so many ways i just don't see anyone breaking down the game for us commoners to yeah, understand yeah 100 mm -hmm. yeah, like, quake could be that guy a, yeah 100 percent. but as i said before like it's it's so weird how like you know like someone as i said before with the scrum stuff and the tight head like no one would look at a scrum and be like oh the scrum's rock solid or the scrum's being dominant that's on the tight head that's why the team's going so well like i've there's been games mm -hmm. with like you know like a tight head won't do anything else in the whole game won't touch the ball won't make a tackle won't clean out a ruck won't do anything crazy just nothing but he'll scrum the other team off the field and he'll walk off the the field into the change room. He'll be man of the match. He's he'll the be celebrated. Yeah. Right? yeah, I love that. So it's there's so many different things that like you can be good at. That's why I reckon rugby is so good. Like you don't have to be big. You don't have to be buff. You don't have to like be like the best tackler, the best runner. As long as you've got your niche, like, you know, if you can kick goals 60 meters out, you'll get picked in a team because like that's something that like, yeah. Yeah, if you're taking the scoreboard that, over, eh? Like, yeah. You, you, if you have your thing you're really good at then that's a little piece of the puzzle that you can add to a team and you know that's why it's i reckon union's so good because you know it's a game for everyone like yeah. i'm a prop i would like i wouldn't the trans me to transfer to league now would be virtually impossible because i'm too big because of how i have to push in scrums mm. and same as like the other boys who are like tight heads and stuff it's like his niche is in rugby union as a tight head because of what he brings to a team so it's yeah everyone's got their individual assets yeah um what other what other positions like say like we've broken down the scrum pretty well like how important is like a line out is that just as important as a scrum more important or even yeah, like, there's line out callers so like that's the other crazy part like i'm a back but mm. it's so cool to watch these guys like do their stuff like um the second rollers like the tall timbers we call them mm. mate the stuff that they have to know and like just the way they call it and they have to work with it the, with the back line because we need to know how the ball's coming out if it's going to be thrown off the top or are they going to take it down and more like there's so much to it which is so interesting like, yeah um and it's crazy how like how their decisions can actually affect how you know mm. that's what you call like it's chess literally chess like you do one move it's going to open up something you know what i mean not giving your cause away or anything but like i hear hookers like they just ramble out numbers and it reminds me of like a quarterback in <laughs> nfl um it, like i don't know how to ask the question but like what do they do with that are they trying to throw people off with the numbers or is like the fourth number the yeah. one that you're going on like what, yeah, what's it's the like, it's like yeah like usually it's either like a pre-call or a, bu a bunch of code that we'll select for a game and the second number is where we're going to throw it to or if there's like a spelling out of like you know if if it's like say it's like busy or something the words busy b's the front y's the back that word in that 
code or combination is where the ball's going to go and that's where we all have to go so like for example like we have oh, like a oh, big, oh, <laughs> wait, wait, say have, it? Like, hey, it's, all blacks it's, just it's listen crazy. to this one <laughs> yeah, it's crazy because like we have a like a tight head who's like our main scrummager who locks down the scrum as set piece we you know you pick will skelton behind him because 150 kilos and he can get the scrum going forward you're not moving out yeah and then you pick like someone like nick frost who's six foot nine and light and can operate a line out really well oh, with, with back yeah. rows behind, around him so like he would like he'll go and talk to quade or, or carter uh, and get the call or the play sheet that we like or that we're going to run like the pattern for example yeah. and then he'll come back and make a decision on the line out call whilst looking at the opposition so like if sam white looks chocked at the front obviously we're not going to go there because like we'll not win the ball yeah and then he tells the hooker and then and then yeah the hook will come so, in so you guys say so, so you guys kick out you guys are sort of walking is there conversation well, starting so there yeah. oh okay yeah. it's something that i like struggled with originally as well because it's like there's so much going information on. you have to process mm. every play you got to process all the information understand where you're going and what you're doing it's like and where you have to stand and whether you're going to get the ball whether you're going to be like a decoy or mm. and everything like in our attack has to be moving so like it's deception everywhere so hopefully where the ball goes we we break the line so next minute hooker yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh you're not straight yeah, yeah, well. yeah. fuck you what are you doing Back to scrumming, bro. yeah um interest outside of football obviously we're talking a lot of rugby you do a lot of stuff of what ability yeah yeah um very good on you that's that's pretty cool Thanks. what made no. you get into into that um well, yeah, it was um, after a spring tour, my um, my first spring tour, actually, um, I got COVID over there. So I was playing for the Barbarians. It's a team that Quaid just played for. So. Barbars are cool. They're, they're bro, Club rugby, why are they one of the coolest teams ever? Because right? they just play footy. Hectic week, bro. So we're in London, in Mayfair, like probably one of the best places in the world. And um, we did the whole week, like it's a piss. week of it's drinking. It's a piss out right? It's yeah. a week of drinking. And we, Renz was our coach as well. So we had heaps of Aussies in the team. We're just a week of drinking, had so much fun, like traveled all around, one to winter wonderland, like everything. <laughs> and then uh, we got to the last day. We're all doing rat tests every day. Did a rat test and Dwayne Vermeulen, the big Safa number eight, he tested positive. And we're like, oh God, <laughs> like what's, like, come on, like let's just play. And then he's like, no, nah, we're all getting PCR tests. Anyway, Dwayne Vermeulen didn't even have COVID. I had COVID oh, and so Rob the Erda had COVID and if we were the other boys had COVID. So we got locked down that day. The next day we were meant to play Samoa. Didn't end up happening. And then when I flew back, I um, had to do three days in isolation. And yeah, I just felt like- You're on the come down. Exactly, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we know, into bro. <laughs> and then And then like, I, I just felt like there was, you know, not no substance in my life, but something that like, you know, I could attach myself to that was not about me and not about, you know, I guess rugby and something that you know I could give back to someone you know if they needed it and that's where the relationship fostered and obviously spoke to Steve Dreslow who's the, the I founder know, I know Steve yeah, Stevie yeah. and um, and bro just hit it off from there and I was just looking after a kid called Joey who's a bloke that I'd take out you know he's a young boy he's 13 now I think and he's um, non-verbal high complexity like he's, he's he can't do anything for himself and we just go out for a day in Bondi and we have a blast bro so it's like it's simple but it's just something that I thought I could give back for yeah 100% bro that's pretty cool yeah. um, obviously gives you a bit of balance and perspective on life too 100% bro 100% like it's it's crazy to think like like how you think are like losing yeah you, you think, think losing like, the scrums like bad eh? and you're just like right, you've got families you go home like, and, like the ho whole family's based around one individual in the family obviously joey in my case where it's like they life isn't yeah it's it's crazy it's they give up so much just to you know support joe and and stuff like that and yeah they can't like leave him like you can't be without him so they can't go for dinners like you can't go for a walk you can't walk the dog you can't go for breakfast together it's like they're a happily married couple yeah um yeah, just things like that. And that uh, what ability allows them to, you know, live a bit of normality for a bit. So I love that what ability is like sort of KPI. It's not like just make sure they have fun. Like that's what they measure on. It's a pretty cool metric yeah. to sort of go on. That's good, bro. It's uh so what are you up to outside outside of rugby? <sighs> Besides heading to New Zealand. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean I'm pretty chilled at the moment. Um obviously footy's footy's my main thing, but um mate, just uh, got a big family, like to look after my family a lot and um yeah, no, I, at the moment, just chilling. At the moment, just footy. All right, boys, last question, and it can be a rugby one and a personal one. What legacy do you want to leave behind once it's all done? Just say being a winner, bro. Like, you can be, like, a successful individual and, you know, play rugby at a high level for 10, 20 years, but I just feel like 
<clears throat> what separates you from other people is just the you know the amount of success you have in the sport so like look at Richie McCaw he was a great player but like what separates him from other sevens is that you know he was world cup winner twice he was you mm. know, let us know winner how many times you know Fine. so I just feel like being successful is like a big thing and winning as a team like and as a country like representing the country bro. Webb Allison 2027 Bro. Imagine that, 23, bro. 23, bro. 2023. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean in Australia. Oh, yeah, 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 imagine that, bro. That would be hectic, bro. Yeah, real. What about you, bro? Uh, yeah, oh, obviously the the winning the winning part of it is pretty special. Which sport? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basketball. No. <laughs> oh, you play ball as well? Oh, the don't ball up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'd say yeah. Look, obviously the winning part of it. Um, I, I guess the main the main part of it um but at the same time i i, I want people to know like like um you know just to have fun i guess like um it looks like you have fun when you play footy right yeah like i guess that's the best way to do it is having fun but um for me um i guess having fun if people can see me having fun they're gonna i guess be happy like for me um family's a big part and um the smiles that i i you know, like after the game and seeing my parents or, or my, my my cousins and that, just to just to see how happy they are sometimes. You know, after like you know seeing me play is uh, pretty special, and um, it's pretty cool. Sometimes you you know you, you go around <coughs> town or or you know any in the shops or something, and there'll be some kid there, and, and just like you know, they they just seem like a bit starstruck, which yeah, is that's cool. which yeah. is crazy. Mm. Um, and it still gets me every time like i it, you know and it just makes me think like how how cool that is like this kid just you know can sees me playing and he's so excited about that which is pretty cool um so i guess yeah just if i can you know i don't know make people happy um by the way i do things like just having fun that's pretty cool um mm. and i guess yeah the, the winning side of it with that, yeah, it's kind of... Oh, it just makes life easier, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Much easier. Yeah. All right, boys, I just want to say thanks for jumping on. Um, obviously, wishing you guys all the best at the World Cup. Have you make the final and the All Blacks pump you. So. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for jumping on, boys. Cheers. Nah, Cheers thank bro. you very much. Thank you. Nice.